First of all, uh, congratulations on Sense and Sensibility. Wow. Thank uh, you. Thank you. You're playing a character that, uh, you know, obviously has been played many, many times before. But how have you approached this in, in um, as an actor? Well, I just I watched everybody else and I stole all their best bits. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you you have to be it's impossible not to be aware of the fact that, you know, this has been adapted several times before and there have been great performances associated with it. You know that going into it, but you really have to try to let that go. Um, you can't, I don't think, get that, let that get into your head too much about how will I stack up against, you know, all these um, other people who have done this part. Um, I think we were all able on this film to kind of understand we're doing our version. We're adding to the the canon of Jane Austen adaptations, um, but we're we're doing our own version of it. And um, I was, yeah, I, I would say I, you know, I prepared for it by, well, reading the novel. Uh, I was also listening to an audiobook adaptation of the novel at the same time as I was reading it. I mean, not at the same time, literally, but <laughs> on the same days. And also I rewatched the 95 Emma Thompson, Ang Lee version. So I had, you know, different adaptations sort of swirling around in my head at the same time, which kind of was helpful for me in a way to distill sort of, yeah, because they're all taking different parts of the book. No, no movie can give the whole breadth and depth of a novel, but um I was able to pull kind of what made sense to me, what made sense to me about Edward and about the tone of their the relationship between Edward and uh, Eleanor. And um, yeah, and I did, you know, I did like watching Hugh Grant and maybe maybe bring a bit of him into into my performance. Although I'd say in that movie, he's like a lot more solemn. He's not so the Hugh Grant that we know uh, from pre, from his later romantic comedies. I brought in a little bit of his later um, awkwardness, let's say. <laughs> well, I, I think I think your performance is is really exceptional. I mean, it's it's a you make it look easy, but it isn't easy. Hmm. Well, thanks, thank you. Yeah, there's like a lot. The character isn't as straightforward as uh, some people might even remember him as. You know, like there's there's some duplicity there a little bit. You know, he's hiding a secret, and so it's not black and white. Um, and it's in those gray zones, I guess gray areas that we can have a lot of fun as actors how, how much does costuming inform your character oh so much you know really you put on those kinds of costumes and it's like the work is almost done for you already mm -hmm. uh i think the costuming team did an incredible job on this film they built such beautiful costumes for all of us everyone looked stunning and yeah when you put when you put on that kind of outfit it makes you stand differently, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't feel like yourself anymore. Like this isn't, you don't slouch in an outfit like this, you know, you stand up straight. And um, it really, I think, informed my performance and pretty much everybody's performance. We talked about it on set. Like, doesn't this make you feel different just wearing this? It's so different from our day to day, you know? And um, it really does a lot of the work in terms of putting yourself imaginatively in that time period you know and, and not to mention the sets that you're you know happy to play in front of as well yeah exactly we were in some gorgeous locations and grand spaces that combined with the costume it's so uh you, yeah you feel really immersed in that world well why do you think people keep coming back to jane austen yeah that's a that's a good question i think she um, she writes about people's, you know, interior lives in a way that is timeless. It feels so truthful, although the specifics of, um, you know, the marriage game are different now. What was happening in people's hearts and minds is very much the same. And she was so perceptive in that writing. And I think also she was one of the first novelists to put, you know, women's emotional interior lives front and center. And that's, um, you know, that was groundbreaking to the point where we still, we still go back to her. Um, you know, she wrote 
six novels, I want to say, in her life. And um, there's just a kind of wealth of of wisdom and of humanity in those in those books. You know, it's just like a, a a well that we keep going back to. Yeah, and I think I think the beauty of the language uh, that is spoken to is, you know, it's it's a lost art to speak that way. Mm -hmm. Certainly, absolutely. And it's a pleasure to get to hear it spoken out loud or to read to yourself and to kind of um, fall into the rhythm of that kind of speech. Absolutely. You've been fortunate enough to play George Kirk in uh, in Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, there's only one other actor that's played George, and that was Shatner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a crazy uh, shoes to step into. Yeah. Although he only ever played him dead on the ground. You no. Know. Uh, do you ever go to the conventions and, and sign autographs and meet with fans? I've started to. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's such a, uh, the fandom there is wonderful. So supportive, so excited. And so, um, you know, Star Trek means so much to them. I, oh, yeah. I have a supporting role, but I've had people come up to me and say, you know, the, I've been a aeronautical engineer for 35 years. And the reason I got into that was Star Trek, you know, it changed my life. I've never heard of a convention for rain. Uh, you know, but there must be there. Uh, well, yeah, actually there have been. Yeah. I have been to some, a couple of rain conventions in Paris of all places, Wonderful. but uh, yeah, I think that, you know, lately the, the fandoms have sort of like Star Trek is kind of the original, like hardcore fandom, but lately people have realized like, if we all bond over this show, like let's make a community out of it, you know, whatever the show is. Uh, and so, yeah, there's conventions now for all sorts of things, just conventions for Hallmark movies. Certainly. What do you think audiences are going to take away from this brand new version? I honestly think that they're going to love it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, although it's an adaptation and it's only an hour and a half long, it's got to really, you know, condense things. To my mind, it really captures the essence of the characters, their interactions, their dilemmas, you know, and it's, um, it's a, an, you know, it's because Hallmark wanted to both uh, honor the original and also honor their own uh, brand of storytelling. I think it's a, it's a lovely, you know, sort of inspirational uh, version, uh, hopeful and joyful version of the story that doesn't sacrifice the, you know, the heartbreak and the unease that comes in it as well. But it's, I think, I think it's lovely. And I think the fact that, um, you know, it's a, it's a Austin, I keep looking over here because that's where my Austin books are on the shelf. Um, <laughs> sure, <they're right>. uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um yeah, and I, I think that the fact that we can do a faithful Austin adaptation, but they can also put front and center Black actors, Black British actors, is, I think, wonderful. And there's no reason why we can't do that. Uh, we should be, you know, it should be something that's been done a long time ago. But I think that the openness now uh, to, to see historical pieces, but with a modern understanding of, like, the, the beautiful diversity of our countries like that's just it just makes sense to me that we should be making more of these and I was so glad to be a, a part of that like you know for me as a white Canadian guy to be a part of this cast of wonderful black British actors uh telling a classic British story a classic universal story now I felt super lucky to be a part of that uh, yeah and we were we we're lucky as an audience to watch you do it uh it, it's yeah. This is a terrific adaptation. In our oh, final great. seconds, we have uh, what's up next for you. Uh, what do you got on the plate? Yeah, well, currently um, filming the third season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Uh, and I'm super excited about that. I have no idea when it might come out. Uh, it takes a long time to turn that show into a, a finished product because of all the cool special effects. But um I'm very happy to be back on that. And I will have another Hallmark movie coming out. Not sure when exactly, uh, but pretty soon. And that's going to be a real treat to a real special one. Well, we'll be looking forward to all of that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Strange New Worlds. Great. Uh, the cast nice. you have is, is just dynamite. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's great meeting you and talking with you and, uh, and you all too. the best. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tony. Take care. You too. Take care.